Pastor Benny Hinn is celebrating 40 years of ministry, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. Look to our precious Jesus today, who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. I love doing programs with you, my partner, on the Word. I love teaching the Word, and I pray to the, that God Himself will speak to you and speak to myself. You know, the Bible has a lot to say about deliverance, and I want to show you how to be free. Listen, I have been in the ministry 40 years. I remember years ago I would go to a church Pastor Maxwell White, every Sunday night in Canada, he would cast out demons. I was only 19 years old, but I've seen much and have learned much from the Bible on how demons enter and what we have to do to make sure to be free from demonic activity in our lives and our homes. Most of the trouble you're facing today in your, uh, in your home with your children or your finances could be demonic. Many diseases are demonic in origin. I'll be teaching on this the next few days because I really want to show you something very powerful from Scripture. Not all diseases are natural. Some diseases are demonic. Remember when the Lord cast out demons often, healing followed because some disease, not all, but some disease is demonic. Now, how does it all begin is really what I want to talk about today and tomorrow. I'll be talking to you about and showing you how to be free from all that because I have experienced self-deliverance in my own life over the years. Satan cannot possess your spirit, but he can oppress your soul, and he can oppress your body too. That's why people get sick in their body, and people get depressed in their soul. We, we have to understand the difference. That the, that the enemy cannot possess the spirit of man, but he most certainly can oppress the soul of man. So how do we be free from that is very important. Go with me to Luke chapter 4, and I'm going to really show you from Scripture facts that work. So if you have a little time now, just put everything aside, and let's look at what the Bible really says about deliverance. In Luke 4... I'm going to read verse 18 quickly. Well, the Lord said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and preach deliverance to the captives. Okay, now, we know that the Lord came to see us free. And the Bible says, if we believe the same works he did, we will do. But let's talk about first... Uh, the promise God gave us. Well, so there are some powerful promises like Luke 9, 1. Then he called the 12 together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure disease. Okay, we know we have that power, but we cannot see it in operation if we ourselves are bound. Now, we all know uh, Luke 10 19, behold, I give unto you power to tread over serpents, scorpions, over all the power of the enemy. Nothing will hurt you. Okay, these are the promises of God to the believer who's walking in the Spirit and who is living in Psalm 91. But let's understand something from Scripture, something that the Bible clearly tells us. In James chapter 4, and this is what really I want to begin with you, in James chapter 4, uh, verse 7, the Bible says what? Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Well, you cannot really resist the devil until you've submitted yourself, yourself and your life to the Lord. You have to submit to God and his will before deliverance can come to you. I mean, you know, yes, I believe in, you know, generational curses and things come on you because of whatever happened to your mom, dad, or so. That is not the reason to stay in bondage. You cannot fight Satan on your own. Number one, you have to submit to the Lord. 
you have to seek his presence because in his presence is deliverance. In his presence, there is liberty, is what the Bible says. You and I cannot uh, you know, expect God to deliver us if we ignore him. He cannot touch us if we are away from him, far away from him. The Lord can touch you only if you are in his proximity where someone comes close to God, then God can touch that someone. The Bible says, draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Well, he cannot draw near to you if you're away. You have got to come close enough for him to touch you. And the Lord is so precious that when we come close, he comes close. He kind of meets you and I halfway. It all begins with one thing, waiting upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord, what? Will renew their strength. That's Isaiah 40. And the minute the presence of the Lord becomes real, this is when deliverance will start. Most of the trouble you've had in your life is probably, you know, the source of it is demonic. We've all experienced uh, attacks from demons. We've all experienced oppression. Listen, I have when I was young. But I have seen the key. I've, I have found the secret. The secret is the presence of the Lord. The minute the presence of Jesus is real, deliverance begins in your life and my life. But you cannot resist Satan. You cannot say no to sin till first you what? Submit yourselves to God. And you cannot submit to God till he gives you the strength to submit. And you cannot have the strength to submit till you come to him. So it all is really quite simple. You come to the Lord. You just wait in his presence till he quickens you. And he will quicken you eventually. It won't take long. Once he quickens you, strength builds up in you. As strength builds up in you by the spirit, you can resist Satan. And you begin to walk now in the spirit. Because if you walk in the spirit, the flesh begins to lose its, its hold on your life. Now, the Bible says resist. Well, I can't resist till God is there. So I got to submit. And I cannot submit till Jesus has touched me to submit. And he will not touch me till I wait. So I, it, it all begins with me. Now, the minute you submit and, and strength begins, something else happens. The Word of God tells us very clearly in Ephesians 4.27. It says, give no place to the devil. Well, all right. Now, how, how is it possible? Let, let's just read this, okay? Uh, it says in verse 26, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. And then it says, neither give place to the devil. Well, how do I do that? Well, it's a process. I begin with waiting. I go from waiting to being quickened. I go from being quickened to being able to submit. I go from being able to submit to resist. And when I resist in the faith, then I will not give place to any demon to come and touch me ever again. But you have to stay in the presence of of the Lord. Now, I'm going to show you in just a second how bondage begins in people's lives, and I would like you to write it down. In fact, it'll be, it'll be on the screen for you. But I got to give you these, these, these scriptures very quickly. The key to, to living in liberty is living in Psalm 91. And Psalm 91 is he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Not, not he that visits, he that dwells. It must be constant. It must be daily. If you miss two or three days, those devils can come back. I mean, it's, it, that's just the way it is. We have to stay in daily contact with God to receive daily power and daily strength. Daily contact is a key. Now, what did, what did the Lord say? He said, well, go into your closet and shut the door. So you wait in God's presence, basically, with no interruptions. And then he said, you pray, give us this day our daily bread. In other words, daily contact. Daily contact is one of the greatest keys to, to see your life freed. And, and, and like I said, if you, if you have not been seeking God to be busy doing other things, you've neglected time with God, bondage sets in. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, 
Bondage can set in within two or three days if you are not, if you haven't prayed, because demons wait for vacancy. As long as you're seeking the Lord, as long as you're living in Psalm 91, impossible for demons to even touch you. But the second you stop, and I've had this happen in my life, the second you stop, you become weak. And when you become weak, you give demons a place to go after you. And if, you, if, if you're not careful, they will build a stronghold inside of you where in time you cannot be free from it without major deliverance. So I'm telling you, there is a way out, and that is to stay in God's presence. Now, most of us get busy and we get distracted and people call us and things happen in our life with kids and family. And often we neglect God's presence for a few days because everything is going on. We can't afford that because if you neglect God's presence, bondage will set in. And if it sets in and you do nothing about it, where well, you have to go back into... You see, because if you go back into God's presence, you'll be free again. But if you keep neglecting the Lord, the price of neglect is so very high. If you keep neglecting the Lord, Satan will build a stronghold in your life, whether it will be sexual or whatever, it, it, it becomes a very strong uh, stronghold. And then you're, 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 you're stuck where you can't be free. But I'm telling you, the key is the presence of Jesus uh, living in Psalm 91. Now, the minute you are living in Psalm 91, then you, can, you have the power to fight. And in 1 Peter, go with me to 1 Peter. Uh, I want to show you what it says here. Uh, this is chapter 5, by the way. And verse 9, it says this, Whom resist steadfast in the faith. In James 4, 7, it says, resist the devil. Once you submit to God, you can resist. Well, well, well how do I resist? Peter, Peter uh, you know, clears it up. He said, resist in the faith. Well, I cannot really resist in the faith if my faith is not there. And faith is not born by the mind. Faith is born by the Spirit as I wait upon the Lord. It's all about, it's all dependent on living in Psalm 91 on a daily basis. It is impossible, it's impossible to be bound in Psalm 91. If you live there and stay there and, and pay the price of time with God every morning, because this, David said, in the morning you will hear my voice. So every morning, get up a little earlier. Give the Lord half an hour, 45 minutes. I promise you, you'll not see bondage in your life. There'll be peace and joy and freedom in your life. But most people don't do that. They neglect prayer because they're just so busy with other things. And the devil takes hold of them and starts to build strongholds. So the second you're in Psalm 91, you're strong. And then it, you're able to submit, you're able to resist. And the minute you're able to resist, then we see something else. And, and let me just give you, give you a warning. Uh, in 2 Peter 2.19, it says this. It says, while they promise uh, them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. Watch this. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. If there's a sin in your life, if that sin has overcome you, there's bondage because of it. But like I, like I said, I mean, it's really quite simple. And why people don't do it is beyond me, is just get back in God's presence. Because in God's presence, there's liberty. Liberty that doesn't come from going to somebody to pray over you, because those devils can come back. It's impossible, impossible for demons to touch you if you spend time with God on a daily basis. And the key is daily basis. Okay, now, let me give you another scripture before I begin giving you how all this begins. In Romans 8, 6, it says to be carnally minded brings death. Now, if people neglect the presence of God continually, if they keep saying, no, I don't have time, uh, I have other things to do, whatever, then here's what starts happening. What starts happening is carnality sets in. And demons enter. This is the first thing they look for. They enter through a carnal 
mind, a mind that has not been washed or cleansed by the blood. You cannot cleanse your mind by saying, I apply the blood. The mind is cleansed when you're in the spirit because it says the spirit of your mind. The minute you get in the spirit by waiting upon the Lord. Listen, I'm just talking to you real here. The second you get in the spirit by waiting upon the Lord, you receive strength to renew your mind. The minute the, the mind is renewed, hunger will burst out of you for scripture. Uh, hunger will burst out of you for the presence of the Lord. Tears will flow as Jesus begins to touch you. And now strength begins to build up inside of you. If these things don't happen, carnality is what will result because the mind can only go into two worlds or into the world of the Holy Spirit or the world of the demonic spirit. There's no in-between for the, for the human mind to go. So there's, 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 there's no halfway. If I seek God, my mind is spiritual. If I don't seek God, my mind is carnal. So the minute my mind or your mind or anyone else's mind becomes carnal, it opens the door to the demonic. And once the demonic enters, if I keep neglecting my time with God, eventually a stronghold builds. And, and, and demons enter because uh, the second thing that happens after carnality is rebellion. Where, well, you know, I just don't care anymore. I, I don't care to pray. I don't care what God thinks. That's called rebellion. And 1 Samuel 15, 23 says what? Rebellion is as witchcraft. Rebellion brings witchcraft into people's lives. Rebellion brings bondage. Rebellion causes demons to, to be activated. So it's very quickly, you know, the flesh doesn't die. The flesh is always there, ready to step back in if we allow it. So we keep the flesh crucified by staying in the spirit, which happens by staying in God's presence. The Bible, listen, the Bible says, walk in the spirit. You'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, I can't walk in the spirit unless I'm in it. I'm, I have to be in the spirit. And I cannot get in the spirit if I'm outside God's presence. And I can't be outside God's presence if I keep neglecting him. So daily contact with God is what gets me in the spirit. And once I'm in the spirit, I can walk in it, walk in the spirit, and the flesh then has no say so. But if I keep ignoring the word of God where he says, come on to me, I'll give you rest. If we ignore that, well, carnality sets into our minds and hearts, and that's what demons are looking for. Demons are looking for vacancy in the mind. Everything starts with the mind. The mind is the door to the soul. The mind is where the battle is fought. Remember this, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers and so on. But it says what? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now listen. Casting down imaginations. The strongholds are always right here. Demons build strongholds in our mind. That's the soulish realm. They, they cannot touch the spirit, but they can sure touch the soul. So casting down imaginations, well, where is that? But it's in, in my mind. And every thought, uh, thought in the mind that comes against the knowledge, where is knowledge in the mind? So when you read that scripture, the Bible repeats the mind three times. It says, watch this, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Where are they? Casting down imaginations up here. And every thought right here that stands against Christ and doesn't want his knowledge. So here we see the mind mentioned as the first place the enemy will take hold of. And once we rebel, well, we're, we're on the way to disaster because rebellion leads to sexual activity in the, in the demonic. I'm telling you right now, this is, I've seen this happen in people's lives. So we go from carnality, rebellion, 
sexual demonic activity. That's when people get into pornography, they get into drugs, they get into adultery, they sleep with women and worse. It all starts with a carnal mind. So you go from a carnal mind, Romans 8, 6, to be carnally minded is death. If they don't deal with that, then the devil be begins to build those strongholds in there and they move into rebellion. 1 Samuel 15, 23, witchcraft sets in. But the next thing in line is, is what it says in Hebrews 13, 4, where now sexual, demonic sexual activity kicks in. And this is where it becomes very dangerous for these people. Look what it says in, in Hebrews, Hebrews 13. And you know, I'm hoping this is helping you. It says, marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. So God will not put up with adultery, pornography, all that, because it destroys people. And in Galatians 5, it calls it the, the, the flesh, the, the work of the flesh. Uh, I'm going to read Galatians 5, beginning at verse 19. It says this. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, and so on. These are the works of the flesh. One of them is fornication, adultery, pornography, uncleanness. Uncleanness doesn't start just because somebody decides to watch a program. Uncleanness begins with neglect. When we neglect the Lord, it's coming our way. And nobody is immune. It says what? Take heed lest you fall. You got to stay strong against this stuff because these demons go about, you know, like the devil, uh, like a roaring lion seeking whom he may, he may devour. And the Lord in Matthew 12 talked about how demons operate. He said they leave and then they go looking for help from other demons. They come back looking for what? Vacancy. The demon that left you, whatever that demon was, adultery, fornication, whatever, drug addiction, whatever. Okay, you, you begin living in the spirit that, that demon is kicked out of your life. They don't give up. They keep watching you. So now they go about and they come back and they'll go about and, and come back seeking, it says, whom he may devour as a roaring lion. What is the devil looking for? Vacancy. And so these demons say, oh, I found it. And then they go and say to other devils, hey, listen, I've been kicked out once. I've been kicked out once. You come in and help me. And Jesus said it, it, it gets worse because it's seven times stronger than the first time because they neglected the Lord. That's all in Matthew 12. But deliverance is promised only in the presence of the Lord. It says, no evil shall befall thee. No plague will come nigh your dwelling. There the Lord is your fortress and so on. But you've got to be in his presence. Now, let me show you what, what happens if it's not dealt with. So we go from carnality to rebellion to what? Sexual, abnor you know, abnorm you know, abnormal sexual activity in the demonic. And the flesh starts to kick. But here's the fourth thing that happens, which is extremely dangerous. Cult activity. The minute people neglect the presence of God, they, they begin looking into the demonic. They begin looking into the satanic. A desire for the satanic gets in there and they start watching things on TV that deals with demons and deals with filth and such things. Now, I'm going to continue this tomorrow because I think it's so important that I talk about this and then pray with you. And things, you know, other things happen that I don't have time to cover. But just remember what I said. Make sure to tune in tomorrow because I want to continue teaching on this and then praying with you. You know what? Let's just pray now. Let's believe God that whatever has bound you will come out of you. Father, in Jesus' name, as I teach through your precious word, bring deliverance to the captives. Lord, you said that that's why you've come. Now, Lord, I pray that every bondage will be broken in your holy and mighty name. And the people of God said, Amen. I prayed over a prayer cloth recently, and a, and a man dying with cancer, they gave him one of them, put it on his body, and God healed him. And if you're on our mailing list, you will be getting one of those. But if you're not, please call today, and I'll send you one free of charge, okay? I just want God to bless your life.
Post Office Box 16, 2000 Irving, Texas, or call the number on the screen. The greatest Bible you can ever get is the Dick Bible. The Dick Bible, it took Finney Dick 40 years to put this together. He covered everything you can imagine from the Hebrew to the Greek to every doctrine, uh, commentaries, a, a concordance, you name it, it's in there. I mean, he didn't miss nothing. It's, it's the best book on prophecy, prayer, faith, the, the second coming, you name it. And you can give this as a gift. Christmas is coming. You can give this as a gift to a loved one or friend. Beautiful leather, large print, only for $100. You can get this today from our ministry. So call the number on the screen and do it. And don't forget, when you sow seed for the gospel, you trigger the harvest. If we sow, we reap. If we don't, nothing happens. So today, I want God to bless your life. And he promised in scripture that he will give you the wealth of the sinner. Well, God will not, cannot give us the wealth of the sinner unless we sow seed. And if you want to secure your tomorrow, you secure it financially with a seed. In, in Ecclesiastes 11, it says, sow a portion of seven and eight because you, you, do, you don't know what evil is coming. So I'm asking you as your friend, partner, and so on, to sow a seed in the Lord's work. Help me take the gospel to the nations, but I want God to, to bless you. I want the Lord to meet every need in your life. I want the Lord to bless you financially. Do it today and watch what God will do with you. I'll see you tomorrow. Pastor Benny Hinn wants to offer you the opportunity to have the Dake Study Bible, widely recognized as the most comprehensive and important examination of the scriptures ever created. This Bible, which has had a profound impact on Pastor Benny's life and ministry, can be yours today for a gift of $100. Pastors, church workers, and every Christian will benefit from the information in this detailed study reference, so call now. Prayer cloths have been prepared by Pastor Benny Hinn's staff. His prayer over them will release an anointing for healing, and they will be mailed to partners as a point of contact to build faith for miracles. I want you to place it on your body when you're sick or somebody that you know who, who you love and needs healing. The part of God has been really strong lately. Blessed Jesus, you declare if two of us will agree on touching anything it shall be done now bless the Lord these are only cloth but we pray as each one of them comes upon the bodies of the sick or the afflicted or the oppressed they'll be delivered and release the anointing of the Holy Ghost the anointing on this ministry the anointing of my life I release it upon these cloth, Lord. If you do not currently receive in mail from Pastor Benny and Jesus. would like to have a prayer cloth, call or go online Jesus. today to request one as a in point of contact of to build your faith for miracles. In the name of Jesus, every one of them, Lord, every one of them will feel the mighty power of the Holy Ghost.